We've spent a lot of this show today talking about Donald Trump's proposal uh, from yesterday. I'm curious just right off the bat what your reaction to that is. Well, I think that Donald Trump should put his money where his mouth is and take care of his business in the Middle East and other places in America also that involve getting funds from the Saudi government and the government of Qatar and these other places that have exported out to the world the ideology of Islam that puts us in this crisis today. Is, is there what, what's the record on that? I mean, how much how much of the how much business business entanglement does Trump have with those regimes? Well, what I'm reading is that Ivanka is looking at you know hotel business interests in Qatar and in Saudi Arabia. Uh, the Donald Trump has Saudi guests, you know, or renters basically in his buildings in New York City. And so I, I'm curious about more of the ties, but I think more than about Donald Trump, you know, speaking with you. And it's great to be with you, John, because I'm just reminded of many years ago when life was much more innocent, when we didn't have this existential threat of Islamist extremism facing us. And I just think back to these decades and how it is that this ideology did come out of these countries of Saudi Arabia and Qatar causing this crisis today and we have really been asleep as con as a country and you know speaking here with Bloomberg I feel like we're at a time much like American companies were during the debate about South Africa during the debate on the Holocaust and various companies involvement in that horrible tragedy a lot of companies are going to have to think deep and hard about their own business investments in the regimes that are causing us so much crisis and so much trouble. There's been a lot of discussion of how the Hispanic American community feels about Donald Trump in the wake of comments he's made. Without overgeneralizing more than, than, you, than is right, what is the Muslim American community thinking about Donald Trump today? Well, it's not monolithic, right? And so what we have is a lot of the Muslim lobby taking this moment to really feed fuel to the fire, I argue. I mean, what has happened is sadly a lot of the Muslim lobby and special interest groups inside of our own community take these moments like this to seize on an opportunity to claim that this is a country that is anti-Muslim and you know I don't feel that way I've grown up in America I came as a Muslim immigrant myself at the age of four grew up in West Virginia and uh, not exactly most people's idea of cosmopolitan culture but I experienced the kind of tolerance and uh, and kindness that allowed me to make this place my home and so what we have unfortunately our folks that are campaigning at that this is a crisis of identity for Muslims and I think they're exploiting the situation also but there are other Muslims like myself and this really courageous band of brethren and sisters that I came together with last week in Washington DC we're calling ourselves uh, the the Muslim reform movement and what we're trying to do is say Look, we've got a problem. Donald Trump is creating such a hysteria because we've had a failure to actually deal effectively with this issue of extremism inside of our Muslim community. And we are Muslims who want to own up to the problem, but we also want cooperation and help from the companies and the government policymakers that are sadly asleep at the wheel on many of these issues. Uh, sorry, you, you were, uh, as everyone or many people know, uh, very close to, to Danny Pearl, um, someone that we were both friends with, and you were with him in Pakistan when he was killed. You, you talked after, the, after Danny's death about how in Pakistan there was no political correctness and that the police were able to search right. mosques and other holy places um, to get to the bottom of what happened. We're now in this, in this presidential campaign. You hear Donald Trump, Chris Christie, other Republicans who argue that Barack Obama and Democrats are kind of in the grip of political correctness and that that is getting in the way of confronting uh, radical uh, Islamic uh, extremism and terrorism. Do you think that's true, that, that PC culture here is a huge problem? Absolutely. You know, John, just thinking about you and remembering Danny, I brought the um, police reports that fought the files of the 27 men who were involved in Danny's kidnapping and murder. And on these pages are explicit 
the ways that extremist interpretation bred in the mosques in Pakistan and Karachi and South Punjab indoctrinated these young men to then one day take Danny from the village restaurant into this compound where they then held him and then murdered him. We lost our friend to the same ideology now 13 years later that confronts our country. And I thought about Danny as I was sitting here, you know, waiting to start this this conversation. And I thought, what would Danny want me to be able to say to people? And I think it's really simply wake up, you know, stop with the political correctness, deal honestly and sincerely with this problem. The Pakistani police realize that there is an interpretation of Islam that is taking these young men and turning them into criminals. We have to be very clear and honest about it. In this movement that we have created, we are explicitly calling out the Islamist extremist interpretation. And this is called Salafism in, in uh, the history of Islamic thought. Saudi Arabia, Qatar are the greatest incubators of this theology. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, the man that takes credit for killing our friend Danny, was indoctrinated by that same ideology. Those two young people in California, same ideology. And yet we still can't call it the, by the name that it should be called. And that's what I would urge the administration to do, is actually call it the Islamist ideology that it is and come up with effective strategies so that we can come to a middle path and come up with reasonable solutions and we, not these extreme ideas. We have less than a minute. Forget the government, forget the, the, the lobbies. What could Americans do to try to deal with some of these problems? What would be a productive thing for Americans to do? I think what they need to do is stop with the political correctness and stop worry about worrying about offending anybody. You know, there's also an industry in, from Saudi Arabia that wants to stop us from having this conversation. And they need to have the conversation, look into their own hearts about the kind of values that they care about and see if that's what this interpretation of Islam practices. And if it isn't, which I most certainly think it is not, then fight it, fight it with us. In the Muslim reform movement, it's not just for Muslims, it's for our neighbors also, because as you know, everybody has a stake in this battle.